previously on Old Man Ronan. Oops. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, she's a little uh, tricky. Yikes. And there is virtually no brakes. <laughs> What's up, riders? Old Man Ronan here. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, it's been a few days since the last video. <laughs> and what a difference in weather. You know, it was really nice uh, when I went down to look at that CT90. And uh, now we've had a couple days of really heavy, crappy rain. A lot of rain last night. A lot of wind. And, uh, oh. The leaves are almost gone. <laughs> so the, like I mentioned in the other video, the days of the drearies are upon us. Um, but such is life living in Ohio, and uh, you just have to get used to it. Uh, so the question of the day is, according to the uh, thumbnail, what did I do? Did I buy the CT90? Well, you can see we're on our uh, Royal Infield Himalayan, which this bike is perfect for this type of year. It really is. It uh, it loves crappy weather, <laughs> which we do have. Oh, looks like somebody was playing uh, Mr. Burnout here. Well, that's not really smart considering he almost went in the ditch right there. Well, what are you going to do? But the question is, like I mentioned, did I buy the CT90? Well, before I actually answer the question, let's talk about some of the pros and cons. And let's start with the pros. It's a 1967 CT90. And one of the reasons why I went down to look at that particular motorcycle is because when I was growing up, I think if you remember from some of the other videos that I've done, I told you I had a Rupp 100. That was my motorcycle that I rode from the age of six to, uh, uh, well, I kept it until um, I was 16 or 17. Uh, uh, then it, uh, by that time I got rid of it, but uh, that was my motorcycle. However, my neighbors, there were uh, two guys that I grew up uh, with, and one of them had a 67 CT90, and the other one had a Honda Dream 90. And those particular uh, motorcycles were a lot of fun, because we traded back and forth. At that age, you know, we'd ride each other's motorcycles and stuff of like that. Mine was more of a dirt bike, and uh, uh, the CT90 was more like a trail bike, obviously that's what it is, uh, you know cub trail and then of course the honda dream was a street bike that my my uh my buddy uh put knobby tires on it rode it off road kind of like i did the harley when i got when i was 14. but until then but i really enjoyed riding that uh, ct90 when i got a chance and it has a lot of uh has a lot of uh, uh memories in my uh in my head so i i really when i seen the thing i <laughs> see the deer and the buzzards when I seen that it was available for sale and in particular it was a 1967 I really wanted to go check it out I wasn't sure the shape the pictures made it look like it was in immaculate shape so that turned me on a little bit the price was a little bit higher than I expected but I wanted to go down and see the bike because I really loved that CT90 it was a fun motorcycle back when I was a kid so that's something that I really wanted to bring back uh, into the memory part you know if I could find a Rupp 100 today I would buy it as well I mean obviously if it's in the right price range because I love I love that nostalgia that I feel and that's what this Royal Enfield Himalayan does to me it brings me back that nostalgia of uh, of having a motorcycle of my youth and uh, like I say, I'm always on the hunt for an XLCH. Um, I'm always on the uh, lookout for a CT90, a Rupp 100, or even a Honda Dream 90. One of those type of motorcycles because it does bring back now, and it goes, it's purely emotional. So that was a major pro. The second pro is I thought if I could uh, get it and it's in decent shape, that uh, I could get uh, my wife to ride it because she really likes doing some of the trail stuff as well too. So that was another aspect of it. So that was another pro. So between those two and the fact of it is that it really is a great motorcycle. I know a lot of folks, particularly Harley, Harley riders like myself, don't like Hondas. I, I really, I've had a couple Hondas in my life. 
um, that's not a big issue for me. I don't really think, even though I, I'm a proclaimed Harley guy, um, I will ride anything and everything because I just simply love motorcycles more than I love name brands. <laughs> Does that make sense? However, if I do have a name brand that I'm going to hang to, um, it's going to probably be Harley Davidson. Uh, but again, what I'm seeing right now, Royal Enfield's moving up the list faster and faster every day, which just means I, I am definitely going to go test ride one of the new uh, INTs or the Interceptors. I really, really, really want to ride one of those. So, as far as pros, we've got the nostalgia part. The fact that it's a Honda and it's a very well-made machine is number two. And the fact that I wanted my uh, wife to ride it as well, too. Those three things, I'm fogging up here, so I'm going to have to open this up again. <clears throat> Hopefully it doesn't mess up the sound too much. It is cold. It's uh, 32 degrees. <laughs> Which again, that's perfect weather for the Himalayan. So those are the two pro, uh, three pros that uh, I think are the most important when we're talking about why I went to look at the bike. Now the cons. Well, and if you look at some of the pictures, the bike was not as in good a shape as I expected it to be. Now that's not really a big deal. Uh, I can fix motorcycles, uh, especially carbureted ones. <laughs> that's kind of my specialty. I don't really have a problem with uh, with fixing a, uh, a, uh, a vintage motorcycle. I've done quite a few of them in my past. Um, and so that's not an issue. Um, parts availability, that is a major con. Parts availability for the CT90 is not as prevalent as for other models. Now you can still find parts and aftermarket parts particularly the engine he put on it he put 125 cc as opposed to the 90 when it came in and a lot of guys are doing that they take those race motors which is what that was and they put them in the ct90 or other motorcycles from honda and make them run faster and things of that nature and that's that's a plus i guess that i should add that to the pro list that it was a 125 newer engine that he put in but to get back to the con I want something that I can restore. I don't want something that I can hot rod because if I'm going to hot rod something. I'm going to hot rod a Harley, or you know, if I could find a uh, a, uh, a Royal Enfield uh, uh, 500cc uh, bullet or something like that that I could restore. That'd be kind of cool too. Or a Triumph. I really love Triumph motorcycles as well. Uh, I would do that as well too. But the fact of it is, the con was that it wasn't as in good a shape as what it was let out to be. And that's a major con for me. Um, it uh, it was pretty rough in a lot of situations. When uh, I went there and called him on the phone, I said, you know, hey, um, is the bike able to be test rode? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have it running. I have it running. Well, the second major con was, it was kind of a con to begin with that I, I mean, it literally had virtually no brakes. And then when I got down there, I found out that he had not ridden it since he put the engine in and that was like two years ago and um, ah, I mean the fact of it is that the uh, the clutch wasn't adjusted at all the fact of it is that the brakes were non-existent the tires uh, he actually are filling up when I got there which gave me a little thrill uh, they were original tires on it um, the speedometer didn't work so no brakes clutch out of adjustment um, all that stuff can be fixed that's a that's a fact but the fact of it is that it wasn't in the shape that I was told it was in the shape and that was a major con and the fact that it's not been ridden the first time that I rode down the road was the first time that thing has been seen to anything over pushing speed in several years is a really big con and uh, you can see the issues that I had trying to make this thing go down the road and all I wanted to do is to see exactly how the bike would perform based upon clutch things like that and that way I can have an idea of how much I actually had to do with it and that thing needed a total rebuild so that's major con number two number three con was the fact that the price was way too high for what it was now I appreciate it was a 1967 we're talking over a 50 year old motorcycle but the fact of it is that that kind of money, I could have bought a brand new one for. He was trying to sell it to somebody that didn't really understand 
how much money it was going to take to restore it. And it's not like a CT90 is high on demand for people in the uh, collector world, if you know what I'm trying to say. That's not a highly collectible motorcycle. Um, I could have got uh, you know any of those Cubs back in the 70s or 80s or whatever uh, for uh, a third of the price. And that's a, that would be a high price for me. But again, I thought the thing was pristine. And if it was pristine, yeah, that would have been, I would have still had to dicker on the price a little bit. But the fact of it is that it was priced as a total re re restoration and or an original. And uh, it was not. Um, and so those three major factors are the cons. So what did I do? Did I buy the bike or did I not? Now I did talk to him for quite a while afterwards. And I guess what I'm going to say is, no, I did not buy the bike. That bike uh, is better off given to uh, somebody that's going to, that has a lot more emotional equity into it than I do. <laughs> and somebody that has a lot of money and doesn't mind spending $4,000 to get a $1,000 motorcycle running, if you know what I'm trying to say. Um, I would I would definitely definitely not buy that bike um, it's cool it's cool as hell and I love the CT 90 it's one of my favorite motorcycles of the you know the, the metric motorcycles of the 60s and uh, you know it it, uh, it has possibilities but just not for me that motorcycle needed so much money invested and it's not about the work but it needed so much money invested into it and with parts that I would have to either fabricate or or basically, you know, and be honest with you, I don't want a 125 in it. I wanted a 90 in it. I wanted to have it more of original. And I guess that is the main factor. The 125 is cool and there's no question about it. Just not for me. I did not realize that it was a 125 until I got there. The uh, And that's what you have to watch when you look at different ads, whether it's on Craigslist or, or uh, or uh, Facebook Marketplace, that uh, sometimes the uh, people aren't quite as upfront about what the equipment is. Uh, when somebody says, well, I built it to a 125, does that mean, what do they do to it? It's instead of wholesale replacing the engine and putting something that's not original equipment into it, which I don't mind, but not for the price that was asked for it. The guy was a genuine guy. I really enjoyed him. He's a nice guy. I'm not saying he was trying to be sneaky. He just was not the type of, it was just not the type of bike that I would buy and put a lot of money in it. And it needed so much work. So much work. And so, but more important than the work is so much money. The, uh, the bike wasn't even close to being safe. Um, I mean, personally, if I was going to have a, if I was selling that bike, I would say this is something you have to bring your trailer for. It is not something you can ride home because it is dangerous. And uh, yeah, it's really dangerous. And I made a joke about it. I made it back alive because there's a couple things I didn't put in the video, <laughs> which will not be in the video, that proved that it was very, very dangerous. And I didn't think it was appropriate to put in there because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have a bad impression on the gentleman that I uh, was going to buy the boat, uh, I was looking at the bike from, or I didn't want to have, uh, you know, it just wasn't, it just wasn't proper to do that. Well, I really hope you like this addendum to my last video. It, uh, like I said, it was a pretty good, it was fun. I mean, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I love riding my Royal Enfield, particularly on a day like today. It's cold as sin out here. <laughs> but yet, I'm out enjoying myself, riding my Royal Enfield on a nice curvy road. You can see the colors are a lot different than they were the last time I was out just three days ago. And, uh, but that's what happens in the fall. You usually get some really bad weather come in and it drops the leaves and the colors go and the drearies are here until april and may again i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did give us a big thumbs up it's a little out of the ordinary i know make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the bell notification share and comment we're still trying to reach that uh, 1000 subscribers by the end of november 1st of december that would be a fantastic uh, pr christmas gift for old man ronan well until next time ride safe and keep her on two wheels baby